All right, joining me now here on The Matthew Filipovich Show is Amos Camille. Amos is the author of the new book, Great is the Truth, Secrecy, Scandal, and the Quest for Justice at Horace Mann School, which you can find at amoscamille.com. Amos, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me, Matt. All right, so Amos, this book is actually a continuation of an article that you wrote for the New York Times in 2012 about the decades-long epidemic of abuse at the Horace Mann School in the Bronx, New York. Let's begin by discussing how that initial article actually came about. Sure. Basically, uh, the original article was called Prep School Predators in the New York Times Sunday Magazine. Uh, I had been a middle-class kid. I went on a baseball scholarship to Horace Mann. And about 10 years after uh, we graduated, five of us went uh, camping in the Sierra Nevadas. And one night during that trip, uh, a friend who I call Andrew, both in the article and in the book, said, uh, guys, uh, when I was in eighth grade, I was uh, raped by Mark Wright. And that was a, a very popular football coach at the time. And uh, we went around trading stories, not of abuse, but of... Uh, rumors and half-remembered uh, weirdnesses. I, I told a story about drinking with the headmaster with another friend that I call Paul in the book. And that ultimately, uh, after Penn State happened, I called my friend Andrew and I said, how are you doing? Uh, he had also been uh, abused by a football coach. He said, I'm not doing well. I wish somebody would write about it. And that is what ultimately became uh, Prep School Predators. At the time, at the uh, in the New York Times, I, I talked about three different predators. Sadly, and why I wrote the book, Great is the Truth, we're now up to 22. That's, That's a, 22 predators, not victims. Right. So initially, after you know, Penn State and talking to Andrew spurs you on to start writing about this, and you go to the New York Times, you go and you start calling uh, a lot of your friends from the time, pretty much anyone you can get in contact with, uh, what did you, so you initially found three. Tell us, tell us about the process of, of your initial digging into this and what you actually found. So I knew that, uh, we, I knew where to go, the types of teachers that we'd heard rumors about. And so I wanted to uh, initially corroborate what happened with Mark Wright and I started to call around. And uh, pretty soon, I hadn't talked to many of these people in decades. And they picked up my phone, their phone, and often said, you know, uh, this happened, uh, or we'd heard that this happened, and I talked to one friend, G, uh, they call him G in the book, and uh, he said, um, I'm about to tell you something I haven't even told my wife. And that's something that I heard uh, a lot. Um, and uh, essentially, everybody was shocked by the, uh, by the revelations, but nobody was actually surprised. You know, as teenagers, we had sort of talked about it, and this one's weird, and stay away from that one. And, but we talked about it in 15-year-old terms. None of us knew, and this was by design. You know, sexual abusers like to make a uh, it's part of their their con to make a, a kid uh, feel that he's the, he or she are the only ones. So let's keep it between us. And so many of these people were laboring under the notion that they had been the only victims, but it turns out there were dozens. So the initial article finds three. You 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 found enough enough to credibly talk about three. After the article is published, what happens then? Well, I mean, because the, the, it, everything hits the fan essentially, right? So you, you get, uh, you get all, all types of, uh, more and more comes out. So tell us what happens actually after the article goes, goes live. So two things happen that were pretty uh, incredible. Uh, New York Times comments section got over a thousand comments. They had to shut it down. People were coming forward, people were making accusations, uh, they were being overwhelmed. Uh, simultaneously, a bunch of groups formed on, uh, on Facebook uh, in different uh, variations. Uh, called, uh, the most prominent one was called Processing Horace Mann, where 2,500 people from the school, from all uh, eras of the school up until today, were talking about their experiences and recasting everything. What about this teacher, some accusations, and then people would come forward uh, and say, wow, this happened to me too. I thought I was alone. And uh, from there, that sort of mushroomed into 22 credible uh, accusations. How did Horace Mann, the school, 
initially respond because uh, I, I remember reading you, they didn't actually uh, give any comments for both the article and the book. They pretty much have not, uh, not said anything on the record for the most part, at least when it comes to talking to you. Right. They didn't talk to me. There was a follow-up piece, a brilliant piece by Mark Fisher of the Washington Post. He did, he did a piece called The, the Master uh, about one specific teacher for The New Yorker. They didn't speak to Mark either. Uh, Horace Mann doesn't speak to the press often. Um, in this case, uh, they doubled down on that strategy. They just uh, wanted it to go away. They had been successful in suppressing this for decades, and they were going to go on with this. Uh, one of the things about the era that we live in, as you know, uh, is that uh, we have the internet. Now anybody can sort of publish at this point. And that's enabled a lot of, it, it's enabled a lot of people to come forward and Horace Mann can no longer control the story. But I would like in their response to uh, the response of the, the Boston Archdiocese when they were rocked by the uh, sexual abuse scandal in the church. Uh, that is to say, uh, suppress it for as long as possible uh, and then uh, just say, oh, it was all in the past. And the school strategy is to really divide what happened back then uh, versus the school they need to run today. And um, it's not quite that uh, simple. Uh, a lot many, some of the people still involved with the school, the, the emeritus board members are still around. So there's a lot we don't know still. And anything that we do know comes from uh, alumni, uh, whether they be writers like Mark and myself or uh, concerned alumni who have raised money for an independent investigation that the school itself did not uh, cooperate with. So it mushroomed from three in the initial report to now, I think you said 23 or 22? 22 credible reports against men and women, uh, female teachers. That's in, in, uh, just another point. Um, in my article, I talked about men on boy violence. That was because of the people that I've talked to. And Horace Mann was a... Uh, 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 just a single uh, male school, boy school, until 75, uh, when it, it changed. And uh, at that point, uh, girls were, uh, it was open season on girls as well.